All right, so um, this is going to be the last plot video that we're going to do. Um, I'm going to kind of go over some of what I think are very useful other plots uh, for uh, in MATLAB. This is going to include the semi-log plots, log-log plots, using two separate uh, y-axes, and then the um, uh, f plot. So with between all of those, I think we'll have a good s summary of everything that would be useful from this point in MATLAB. Note that there are a lot of other things we could do, and it's somewhat on, on your accessibility in the plot function up here and so forth that you can explore what's useful to you. But I think these will be the ones that are of greatest use in engineering classes and otherwise. So to demonstrate some of this, let's create a data that we can use to plot. And I will go create an x is equal to 0 to 10 and I will create a y is equal to the exponential of x. Sure, why not? That sounds good. Now we can plot that. I can plot x comma y and we'll get a plot that's hidden but it's over here and you can see it's as you'd expect this exponential curve upwards. Kind of hard to see but you know in, in different log scales, in different scales we can make this plot more or less visually useful. So how do we do that? Well one way we can do it is by doing a uh, uh, semi-log plot. So we can do semi-log of x and we can do it in x, y, in the x form, we can do it in the y form. So semi-log just means one version is log and here you can see the x-axis is in log and you'll notice it's log base 10 not and even though if you go to help log it's natural log but the semi log plots are log base 10 which makes sense so if we did semi log remember you can click a letter hit the up arrow and it will do the function that was recently called by that letter so we'll have that and we can change this from x to the semi log y and you'll get the nice log plot that you would anticipate for the uh, exponential function where the y-axis is in lo log base 10 this is in uh, uh, standard uh, scale and we have that uh, set up you do log log plot which is just log log x comma y and it takes that form so you can get a sense again it's in both in log formats so what happens though if you want to have two different plots on the same graph that have different magnitudes? So let's say for example we were going to do we have y, we have a new set of y where it'll be y2 which will equal to exponential of x times 5. And if I was to plot x comma y comma x comma y2 on this you'll see well one there's two lines here there's a really 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 tiny blue line down here and then the red line just kind of squelches it to no end well what can we do how do we fix that problem well we can actually use what's called the plot yy you can say plot yy and now we plot in our two axes as before x comma y2 and you'll now see we have both our blue axis and our other axis. It's color-coded where the axes are identified by which figure, which plot refers to what. And then this over here, you see very nicely, you can plot both axes on the same figure, even though they're in different magnitudes, and you can compare trends and visualize them very easily. So I think these are really the uh, other very useful functions. Uh, there's one more that changes the dynamic a lot. Uh, so I do think that obviously semi-log, log plots, this plot yy, but the final one that we want to talk about is this f plot. f plot is a function plot and it'll do exactly that. Everything we've done so far is taking actual data and then plotting that however we want to do in the scatter type format that we've done in Excel. But what if we have a function that we want to plot without having to explicitly draw out what 
the uh, in what, what the actual uh, creating data arrays to plot to begin with. We can do that by the function plot. Now, if we go again, just type in help f plot, and you'll get a sense for the format. You'll see here it has the one form. There's different forms it can plot in, but the first one I like to really work on is here. You have your function and you have limits. You can specify the bounds that you're going to plot between. Here you're specifying a minimum and a maximum as a single vector, a two-dimensional vector, and you have a function that you're going to give in. Now, you'll notice the function here at helps. That's kind of funny. Um, the uh, plot examples that you can do. It's doing this in what is a uh, anonymous function format. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, when we get to that part in the class, and we've already done a little bit about this in these in these uh, classes, and it's called a function handle as well as another term for the anonymous function. But you can still do a script, uh, at least for the time being. So what do I mean by that? I can enter in parentheses that enters in a a text field. I can create sine of x, enter, and I can specify limits. I can say zero to I don't know, we'll do 2 pi as our limits. And you'll see I kind of did a typo there. Go back, enter, hit enter, and it yells at me because it says it's going to change this and you're not going to be allowed to do this in the future. But for the time being, we can do it, so I'm not really worried about it. And now this might be something that just comes up in my version because I am running a pre-release use uh, version of, of MATLAB. So I'm not certain if your version will give you this warning, but... Uh, just in case it does, don't get too uh, worried or freaked out by it. But you see here, we got the nice function. Plotted exactly as we'd anticipate. Um, and we can go back in and edit this. It doesn't have to be a simple sine function. It could be, I don't know, let's say divided by, or I'm going to, if I say divided by x, this, um, it will give me a very nice output of your sine function divided by an exponential function, an exponential decay, which looks very nice and what we anticipate. You could actually go back in and say plus x, and you'll get that sine function plus x. Uh, that doesn't look as pretty. Let's, oops, go up, and I'm going to say times x uh, times 0.2. There you go. So you have that nice little kind of weird looking thing there but you can keep on doing this and changing this however you want um, the nice thing is actually the F plot does the same kind of editing adjustments on formats so if I wanted it to be a I don't know a magenta dotted line for example it becomes an ex impossible to see in your screen magenta dotted line let me make the magenta circles there you go. And you can see the plots it points out and so forth. And it'll specify the number of points based on uh, changes in curves and what it thinks is, is appropriate to, to fill in and make a, a smooth line. It's not always perfect, but it, it'll uh, give you a sense of how it, what the outputs are going to be. But you can change this however you like. Um, let's say K line, and that'll give you a, you know, a solid line, black line. There you go. And that's all there is to that. Now note, if I was to go back in and say, here it just happens to recognize it has one variable called x. Uh, it could be t. I can go back in and change all these to t or p or whatever variable I want to be. And it'll be happy with that and it'll fix that. However, if I go back in and put in two variables, two things it says it doesn't know what it is, it's going to yell at you and say error in fplot must be a single variable. And so it's smart enough to know that, so you'll have to go back in and, and either give this a single value or make it a variable. Oops. Make it a variable and just let it run as it stands. So that is, in a nutshell, everything we can uh, that I wanted to really cover with plots at this point. There's a lot more to learn, a lot more to do, and there's even ways you can access data from plots and use it or input or get information from things, and we will cover those as we go further into the input-output sections of the class. But for now, 
I think this is uh, covers a really good summary of of everything that MATLAB has to offer in terms of of uh, editing and getting outputs from this. And then going from here in the next video, we're going to be covering how to do the functions. I keep on mentioning that this is a really clean and easy way of doing work in, in MATLAB, and now we're going to start on that point entirely. So, uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.